Well, hello, and welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller, and we are continuing on with our third session for auto, uh, modeling an automobile. We've done almost all of the boring stuff so far. We've got just a few more steps in setting up our cube, and then we can begin with the fun stuff. Now, I want to switch over here to a top view and let me bring this into let me zoom in a little bit now I did the best I could eyeballing the placement of this my th this half of the car along the center line of the automobile but well you know it can't be absolutely precise because look at the thickness of the line there is some leeway here. So as precise as I am, am trying to be, I know there is going to be some margin of error that is to be expected. In fact, look over here at the Z position of, the, of my object as I, as I move it around. Let me turn snapping off. And even though I'm on my line, you still see that the Z axis is fluctuating. So here, yes, I'm on my line but I am also over here and uh, the z-axis is uh, is changing on us so let me come over here to a perspective view what I want to do is uh, let me go back to a top view and make sure I got this just as close as I can okay that's good change to perspective I'm going to hide my blueprints for now. Here's what I want to do. And this, this step is crucially important. Uh, not, uh, not doing it won't prevent us from modeling our car, but it'll, it's a crucial step to aid us in making little repairs, not if they happen, but when they happen. So what I want to do is if you look at the Z coordinate for all these points I want them to be all the way at 0 0 0 I want everything zeroed out so <clears throat> I am going to select these and hit 0 now watch over here when I hit enter to commit this there's just a very slight movement of uh, on them I'm going to reset the pivot point for this. Now let me enable my blueprints. Now if I were to select any of my points uh, on, on the center edge, uh, they will always be at zero. And that is a vitally important step and you'll see as we go along. Okay, let's select these bottom polygons. We don't need them. and not that one. I'm going to delete them, enable my blueprints, come around here to a front view, and this polygon here for the tire, I don't need that, and this tire, I don't need that. I'm going to go ahead and save what I have done so far, and let's change to a perspective, and let me just take a quick exam what it is that I have made here. See if there's anything else that needs to be deleted before we begin. And I'd say that's it. We are ready to begin modeling. Now here is why I uh, deleted half of the car. Because when we go and once we are finished modeling it, we're going to enable the symmetry tool and whatever it is that we create on this side, the symmetry tool will duplicate it on this side. So that is uh, pretty much the process that's involved with symmetrical modeling. And since automobiles are symmetrical, this is how cars are modeled. Not all the time, no, because if you go to Daz Studios, um, Daz 3D, and look in their software section, 
look in hexagon and view some of the, I think it's called in progress or um, not in progress. They show very, several demonstration videos of their software and one of them is uh, some guy modeling a car just doing standard uh, box modeling and extruding um, uh, polygons and sides and he does it without symmetrical modeling. Uh, well he uses the symmetrical tool but he uses a different symmetrical tool other than this. But we're going to be a little bit more precise in the modeling of this car so that's why we are using this symmetrical tool up here rather than the symmetry tool here. Okay, so let's add one level of smoothing to our car, maybe two. I'm going to enable my transparency again. There we are. And I'm going to switch to a front view. And the first thing I want to do is click on Select Points. And I'm going to just start making sure that the wheel well here conforms to our model. And just adding, just having added that one level of smoothing has done a lot in rough in uh, creating the shape of our of our wheel wells here. And bring that down there. That'll work. This one can come up here. All I'm doing is just matching points to the blueprints. It's pretty. It's pretty simple. I'll just select these three and bring them up. Things will constantly get shifted around, unfortunately, as we work on this and that's just uh, that's just the nature of the beast and you will constantly have to go back and and, uh, and adjust some things okay let's bring this one into here bring this into here actually I'll bring it down there. See, this is starting to get uh, a little moved around also, but we'll just have to keep playing around it with it. Actually, this is going to have to come up to here. And we'll move these down. I'll take this outside one here and I will move. Oh, no, I better not. I'll just start, I'll just move everything slowly, little bits here and there. I'm just going to be roughing out the global shape of this. And unfortunately, there is not much to really say. It's pretty self-explanatory just looking at uh, what I'm doing. So I'm going to pause it here. And I'm and I will be back in a few minutes. Let me select that one there. I'm just going to be um, forming this thing, as you see that uh, what I'm doing, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I'm almost done. Uh, I wanted to restart this again. Um, even though these these points right up here are the top of my model. I'm also making sure that I'm selecting this one down here below it 
because that be, because if I didn't, I'd end up doing that. I'd be uh, really mashing the uh, the geometry. So I want to move the whole thing down. So I'm selecting all those points. And I'm going to pause it right here and be right back. OK, I, uh, I'm happy with these results so far. Now bear in mind, this is just roughing out the global shape of it. There will be a lot more refinements as we go along. OK, let's change to a top view. And we're going to do the same thing for the, uh, the other profile of the automobile. The side over here. And unfortunately, it's just the, uh, the nature of what we're doing. There's going to be a lot of repair work that needs to uh, that will need to take place as things get uh, stretched and moved around inadvertently Let me um, change to a perspective view. I'm not sure what happened with... Where is this point? I had selected... I thought I did. Let me just disable my uh, blueprints. I thought something got really... Well, I guess that looks okay. All right, come back to a top view. Let me grab these and just move them in. I, uh, by the way, I really appreciate the uh, the feedback regarding this uh, automobile series that I have um, seen in the forums. It is very encouraging for me, and uh, it's nice that uh, it has been so well received and um, and beneficial. Let's change to a perspective view. Let me hide my blueprints. Yeah, I did. I didn't want to. Slide. There's a little crease in there. I don't like that. That, that one's going to have to come out. Lots of time for um, making our repairs and fine little uh, adjustments as we go along. OK, back to top view. Show my blueprints again. Let's see what we've got here. I think that's the bottom one. Let me uh, enable my four views. Yeah, that's uh, my bottom one. And that needs to come out, I believe. Don't like what I've done with this here. I'll try to get these to be straight. 
Maybe this is the offending one. Ah, perhaps that was it. Okay, back to the top view. And point mode. Notice I'm trying to select all of the points that are in line with an edge. And we could probably add another cut all the way through here using um, uh, the tessellate tool, but I'm not going to do that right now. Looks like it could come in here a little bit. Okay, you get the idea of what I'm doing. All right, let's change to a perspective view and check our work. Hide our blueprints. Uh, I really don't like that line on there. I do not like that. Well, I'm going to have to uh, go and do a little repair work on that by pulling some points out and trying to uh, fix that. And I will do that in between our uh, next two videos. Let's uh, kill the transparency here and take a look at what we've got. It's looking pretty good so far, except for that little bit. Let's just for the fun of it turn on our symmetry. Uh, select it first, turn on symmetry, and see what we've got. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, delete. Delete that half. Um, I'm going to finish up here. I'm just going to make some uh, repair, do a little repair job here on the back in between this and the next tutorial. Uh, but let me show you why it was critically important that I zero out these inner points uh, along the Z axis. Because at any point in time during the modeling of this car, if we were to make one small adjustment along the Z axis of any one of these points, Watch what happens now when we enable our symmetry tool. Well, I know I... Uh... Let me make a small adjustment. Maybe I didn't. There. Okay. Let's enable our symmetry tool. There we are. You see that seam? Because we moved it away, we moved that point away from the center line, the symmetry tool, when it creates this clone, it doesn't fill in by also moving over and filling in that gap. No, it, it will create a straight line right down the bottom. Uh, excuse me, it won't create a straight line down the bottom. Well, it will, what it will do is if the model, the half of the model we are creating goes like this, then the clone or symmetrical one that it makes, it will also do the same thing. So that's why we've got to be vigilant in trying to stay away as much as possible. Well, not as much as possible. We just don't um, play with those 
z uh, with these points moving them along the z-axis. We can move them up and down and left, them, left and right along the y and x-axis all we want, but we cannot move them along the z. So that was why <coughs> we, uh, we zeroed them out at the beginning. Now, it really doesn't matter if we put them at 0 or if they were at 5 or if uh, the number read you know 57.1396214 it doesn't matter uh, just as long as they were all on the same number but if or when any of them get uh, misaligned it's always easy to remember 0 and you can just plug that number in there and and fix it in just uh, in this in the in the time it takes you to snap your fingers. Okay, so this is the um, third tutorial for modeling an automobile. Thanks for watching here at Geek and Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.